the starting point. Nowadays, this has to be the two seminal decisions. Uh, one in 1984, Cuts and Head, where the uh, rule without prejudice savers to costs first gained approval by uh, one of the higher courts. And uh, secondly, uh, Russian Tompkins and the GLC, where the extent of the privilege, insofar as it affects other parties to litigation and third parties outside the specific litigation where a party sought to rely on the privilege uh, came uh, to be considered. Cuts and Head is a, a, a great little case. Um, it arrived in front of a two-judge court of appeal, Lord Justice Oliver as he then was and Lord Justice Fox. Um, uh, nobody thought that this uh, rule uh, was going to be the major issue when the matter first came before uh, the court, uh, but uh, they realised in the course of argument that uh, that was going to be the case, uh, and indeed had to adjourn it for full argument. And in that full argument, one of the old cases, a decision uh, of Lord Justice Lindley, as he then was in Walker and Wilshire, decided in 1889 was given a particular uh, a prominence in Lord Justice Oliver's judgment. Uh, Lord Lindley, as he subsequently became, said, what is the meaning of the words without prejudice? I think they mean without prejudice to the position of the writer of the letter if the terms he proposes are not accepted. If the terms proposed in the letter are accepted, a complete contract is established and the letter, although written without prejudice, operates to alter the old state of things and to establish a new one. Now in that same case, decided in 1889, Walker and Wilshire, uh, Lord Justice Lindley also referred to certainly one of the exceptions to the rule when he indicated that, for example, when the court had to decide whether the question of Leitchie's uh, 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 applied in any particular facts that without prejudice correspondence had to be uh, taken into account. But he also said this, the facts may I think be given in evidence but the offer made and the mode in which the offer was dealt with, the material matters that is to say of the letters must not be looked at without consent. Now in uh, Cuts and Head, Lord Justice Oliver approved the three strands of uh, counsel's argument. Firstly, that the protection from disclosure of without prejudice negotiations rests in part upon public policy and in part upon convention. In other words, an express or implied agreement that the negotiations should be so protected. Uh, secondly, that there was no reason in public policy that precluded a conventional modification of the protection to the extent that had already been suggested in matrimonial proceedings in Calderbank and Calderbank, with which I'm sure you are all familiar. And uh, thirdly, that in fact, with various modifications, a practice of without prejudice savers to cost had already been adopted in most of the divisions uh, in the High Court in different types of proceedings. There have been some important recent cases in uh, this uh, century on uh, without prejudice. A powerful defence of the rule was SIB and Finken, where dealing with the unambiguous impropriety exception, Lord Justice uh, Ricks uh, said specifically that it's not an abuse of the rule to tell the truth. Uh, that was what the without prejudice rule was all about, to enable parties uh, in the course of negotiations without prejudice to be frank with one another. And when considering the question of perjury, in other words, a distinction between evidence given in the face of the court and that which was stated in without prejudice negotiations, he posed the question of the what would happen if such gave rise to an exception uh, if in the criminal charge of perjury, uh, saying that it would fall to be debated without the protection which should be available to the accused party on an interlocutory outing or even at trial 
with the potential of derailing the trial by the exposure of without prejudice material to the trial judge. There, of course, uh, uh, drawing by analogy the concept of legal professional privilege and common interest privilege together because they both rest on a foundation uh, that such material is inadmissible in evidence in a court of law.